say that we're entering the time of year when many people start to show signs of seasonal affective disorder. It's the holidays for a lot of different reasons, the temperature, the weather. So let's break it down. Joining us now, Dr. Jamie Zuckerman, a licensed clinical psychologist to help us get through this. Good morning. Good morning. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. I feel like I've seen you through <laughs> Zoom. I've seen you online. It is great to have you in the Thank studio. You. So thanks for coming. What is it? What is seasonal affective disorder? So seasonal affective disorder is basically a mood disorder that has a distinct beginning, middle, and end point that comes about early fall and ends after the winter. So it's very time specific. Okay, how do we know we have it versus I'm just sad or it's cold mm -hmm. or whatever? So what I always tell people is the level of depression you have would interfere with your daily functioning. So there's a distinct difference in your everyday functioning, which is a little bit more than just sad. So things like not just tired, but extreme fatigue, not wanting to get out of bed. Um, weight gain is very common. Okay. Something called hyposomnia, which is sleeping too much. Agitation, which a lot of people don't associate with depression. Okay. You know, things like that. So you pretty much know. We see all the different symptoms there, but so you'll be able to figure it out. I started rattling off different things. You know, during the holiday season, people miss loved ones. Mm -hmm. It starts getting dark earlier. Mm -hmm. But what are the reasons that this happens? So it's not formally, officially understood, but two of the theories that they think are... Um, affecting our mood would be one obviously it's darker it's colder so people aren't going out as much so they are naturally isolating themselves more the other is the idea that we are getting decreased natural sunlight so it affects our melatonin um, and it also affects something called our circadian rhythm which is our body's natural clock and kind of helps us with our sleep and regulating ourselves okay, so now these are things unfortunately if they are the causes not things we can do a lot about like we can't make it light you know, any longer actually you can huh? yes uh, all right. <laughs> so that was next. What do we do about this? What are some of the treatments? <laughs> so there is something called a light box, which is specifically designed to give you more natural light. Um, artificial, yes, but improves our mood. Um, simple things, like instead of taking a phone call inside, stand outside while you take your phone call, just to get some natural light. Take a walk around the block. Uh, if that's too much, sit outside for five minutes. Um, you know, have your coffee outside just to get that additional sunlight. Okay, why citrus fruit? Why citrus does that help? Citrus fruit is just, it gives us that vitamin C, gives us vitamin C, it gives us all our vitamins that we need that we're not getting that the natural sunlight would normally give us. So at what point, and we, we can do all of those things, we can exercise, we can get more light, we can take our vitamins, we can do citrus, at what point do you realize you need professional help? So because seasonal affective disorder is in that time frame that I spoke about, if after the winter months going into spring, you still feel that you are unable to get out of bed, you're missing work, you're isolating from friends, you're not returning phone calls, things like that, you would want to seek out um, help from a mental health professional. Yeah, and I actually, and one more thing, I got a couple comments online from people saying they were having a hard time finding somebody, mm -hmm. finding somebody who could see them, finding somebody who could fit in. Any recommendations for folks to find that, that person? Yeah, so there's a website, psychologytoday.com, where it lists all the therapists in your area by insurance, by specialty. Um, a lot of university clinics, too, are taking people, uh, graduate students will see them. So that's where I tell a lot of people to go if they can't find resources because it is very difficult to, to find. Okay. I appreciate you coming in. We're right. trying to break down stigmas. Like a lot of people don't want to talk about it. Right. A lot of people don't want to acknowledge they need help. I have. Uh, and I know that you do this, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, so thank you for helping sure, us do thanks that. thanks for having me. It's great to have you in studio. Yes, I know. It's good to see you. Now we're working on a side project <laughs> with Karen Hepp. We're going to set up a Zen studio yes. here at Fox 29. Yes. Cool. I'm in on it. Thank you very <laughs> thank much. Thank you. Have a